know, being from New Jersey, uh, also, you know, just hearing about you and, you know, everything that you've been doing. Wanted to ask you, uh, over the last couple of years, um, you know, you've really burst onto the scene, not only on the baseball side of things, but also the social media side of things. How have you been able to, um, you know, complement both sides of things and really make sure, uh, you know, you're getting your work in, but you're also, uh, I saw one of your interviews just talking about how, uh, you know, on social media, you're really trying to, you know, talk to the youth, get back and everything. So how's everything <clears throat> going on in terms of balancing both of those sides? Um, well, whatever I, I usually practice more in the afternoon and then at night I'll post things. Um, I just feel like if, you know, the younger ages see what I'm doing and how I'm, you know, chasing my dreams that they'll be influenced to do the same thing I am and they realize that as long as they work hard they can get to the position I'm in or even further with whatever they hope to do in life. For you, um, being from Jersey, obviously, um, you know, going to high school and everything, you know, not going to a powerhouse uh, high school like we see a lot of other kids. Um, how have you been able to, um, you know, go about it the right way? Just because, you know, seeing uh, a lot of kids in baseball uh, that aren't at powerhouses, obviously, you know, not a lot of kids are going to be as serious as you sometimes. Uh, some kids are going to be joking around. So how do you really push yourself on the field to be your best at all times when it might seem like you're one of the only ones that's really trying to, uh, you know, be your best every day? Um, well, you don't really have to go to a powerhouse to be noticed. Um, if, if you're good at what you do, uh, somebody's going to hear about it. doesn't matter where you play, where you go. If you're good at what you're trying to do, somebody's going to notice. So, um, I just use that to my advantage and think like, it's not about what everybody else is doing here. It's what I'm trying to do for myself and how I'm trying to reach my goals in the future. Um, you can't always rely on everybody around you to help you and do what you need to do. So, um, you know, there's always that saying, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. That's kind of the mentality you have to have in order to pursue your dreams and get far in life. You know, you can't rely on people to be there for you when you have to be there for yourself. The support staff for you, um, you know, seems immense just with your family. Uh, you know, it seems like you're a close knit group. How cool is it to be able to share this not only with, um, you know, yourself and your teammates and coaches and everything, but also from the family side of things, you know, going to um, Miami, I saw the, uh, you know, you went live on Instagram. Congrats on that too. But I mean, everything like that, I mean, just how cool is it to do it with a family that, you know, supports you so much? Um, my family loves baseball, you know. Uh, they're the ones who got me into it since I was two years old. I've been playing t-ball and stuff like that. So, you know, my uncle and my dad always took me to the field, helped me practice. So they're the reason I'm here today. And um, it's just really cool to share the experience because, you know, like you said, not everybody has a supportive family that influences the things they do. But um, my family takes all the time out of the day in order to help me with whatever I need, taking me to practice, showing up to every game. So I'm really thankful for that and happy that, you know, I have supportive parents like that that can help me get to where my goal is. For you, I see a lot of kids, um, you know, with uh, going to college and everything, uh, especially right around now, um, you know, you only being a junior but um, in high school, but going through, uh, you know, potentially, you know, being drafted or potentially, you know, going to college, you know, either route, um, you know, you already have that set in stone, sort of speak, uh, with going to Miami Having this season and another season uh, next year, how are you going to just stay grounded and, you know, live in the moment rather than, you know, waiting to get to Miami? Uh, just, you know, living as a kid um, who's just, you know, going about his job every day. Um, you know, even though you're, you're going to Miami, like, even though I'm going to Miami, um, baseball is what I really love. So you can't just take these next two years easily. You know, you have to keep, getting better at your craft and doing the best you can because even though you even though you got accepted into the school doesn't mean you're going to make the team even though you got accepted doesn't mean you're going to keep that scholarship you know things like that um but yeah you just really gotta you gotta prepare yourself for the next level you can't be happy with where you're at right now because there's always something you can work on and there's always something you can get better at from the baseball side of things obviously um you know you're advanced for your age just in terms of uh <coughs> You know, exit velocity, I saw, um, you know, velocity on the fastball. I mean, it's insane for your age, honestly. So what do you what do you work on 
Uh, is it more the little things that you're working on trying to refine? Because obviously, you know, the big tools, it seems like they're there. Um, so what's really kind of your process and what are you trying to work on uh, for yourself? Um, it's really just repetition, you know, getting the muscle memory down because, you know, you can hit a ball 102 miles an hour, but if you're not able to repeat that same swing that you had when you hit that, you're not going to be able to do it again. So it's all about consistency. It's not about um, the maximum. If you're a guy that can hit one home run but then strike out 10 times, 20 times, it's, it's not going to get you anywhere. You really just got to, you know, make consistent contact, you know, keep doing the things right instead of always looking for results. It's about the it's about the journey, not the destination. For you, um, you know, just on the circuit of uh, tournaments and everything, uh, different events, um, you know, seeing you all over the diamond, uh, you know, saw you a little bit in right field, you made a sick catch uh, in right field, uh, you know, shortstop, pitching. I mean, are you comfortable all over the place? I know, um, you know, that's easier said than done. Uh, you know, you could say you're comfortable uh, but are you truly, you know, just, you know, looking to go out there and, you know, play anywhere uh, at this point? Because it seems like you can do it all um, in a way that you're comfortable also. Um, yeah, I'm very versatile. I can play any position. I used to catch. I don't I do not do that anymore. Um, my primary position is shortstop and pitching, obviously. But I've played every position since I was a kid because um, when I was younger, I was five years old and I was playing on a 10 year team, 10 year travel team. So all the kids that were five years older than me. So from like the age of five to like seven, I played the outfield. And then from like, I caught a little bit from the age of like eight to nine. And then from there on, it was just infield stuff. But I played every position and I've gotten to learn, you know, at least the basics of every position on the field. And I feel like, you know, I'm, more advanced at some than others but i feel very I, f I feel comfortable at any position and i can be played anywhere the coach needs me you spoke about how you <coughs> played everywhere at least to the basics i wanted to ask you um you know this might not be true or not but playing everywhere on the field um you know just from experience looking at the positions differently looking at um you know somebody who just plays shortstop their entire life you know they don't see the other positions they don't see how uh, the game works at other spots do you think that uh, ultimately helps you uh, do you not really think about that uh or are you somebody who tries to you know maybe if you see the catcher uh, in a certain position or you know down on one knee uh you know you know you're going to steal the bag or something like that so do you take those kind of little instincts from each position to your advantage yeah um you always got to know about every position because you never know when you're going to be needed there you never know when somebody can come that's better than you because there's always somebody better than you. So if you're at a high school, you played shortstop your whole life, and then the number one, <coughs> sorry, the number one ranked kid in the country comes to your high school. You know it's it's probably going to be a little tougher to get that starting spot. So you got to be ready to play anywhere and you know help your team any way you can because that's what coaches look for. They don't want to you know a guy that's only stuck at one spot and can't do anything because if you have somebody there already that can possibly be better than you. you got to be able to move around and do what you have to do. But at the same time, you know, knowing those positions help you, helps you during a game. <laughs> like you said, if it catches down on one knee, you know, or, or a base runner is doing something specific with his hands, you know he's going to steal. You can get ready for that and in order to help you visualize what's going to happen before it happens. For you, um, just talking about, um, you know, from the pitching side of things also, I know you have the electric fastball. Is it something where... You know, you're just trying to locate that more. Obviously, you know, the velocity is there. So is it location for you and off-speed pitches? Or are you somebody who, you know, you feel confident in the fastball and you're trying to work on other pitches? How do you, you know, go about your business from the pitching side of things? Um, I like to use my fastball until somebody proves that, you know, they're ready for it. <clears throat> so if you, you know, if a batter steps in and, you throw a first pitch fastball and he's sitting there on time and he fouls it all, you know, and you got to work with the other stuff. But um, until somebody shows me that they're ready for that fastball, then that's all you're going to throw. You know, you want to try and get through the whole top of, you want to try and get through the whole lineup once before you have to use any of the other pitches. Because, you know, if they're not ready for your fastball, then they're going to be really surprised the second time they come around and you use all those off-speed pitches. For you, um, just, you know, just thinking about, um, 
you know, you throwing, uh, how hard you throw, especially in New Jersey. Um, you know, I went through it too. Um, you know, guys, you know, aren't going to be ready to hit 97 most of the time, 98. So for you, how do you go about that? But also, it's weird because, you know, most guys aren't going to hit it around here. So how do you go about that? But also try to get in your own work, uh, make sure, you know, your off-speed pitches are working and really try to develop rather than just saying, you know, I'm going to go throw, um, you know, 100 fastballs and just, you know, give up one hit, give strike out 15. I mean, are you somebody who just will take that stat line every day? Or are you someone who, you know, second time around, you're really going to try to feel out your other pitches, even though they might not be able to hit any of it? Um, it depends on the game, you know. If it's a if it's a mid season if it's a beginning of the season game, you know, you really want to try and get a feel for those things. But you know, if it's a championship game and these guys aren't hitting your fastball, you gotta do whatever you can to help your team win because at the end of the day it is a team game and you want to do what's best for your team, not just, you know, self improve. So whatever you can do that's best for your team is what you have to do in that moment. But um you know, you could also use bullpens and stuff like that to work on your other pitch. It doesn't specifically need to be in a game. You can do live at bats before practice, you know. I mean, um, during practice, stuff like that. So at the same time, you know, like I said, you got to do whatever you can to help your team, but self improve when the time is right. For sure, yeah. For you two, I talked actually a couple of, uh, weeks ago to uh, Benny Montgomery. He's over in PA. Uh, you know, he's going to be most likely a first round pick. And, you know, he goes to a local high school also. And I asked him. How do you go about your own business, making sure you're getting your work in? But also, I mean, it's got to be cool. I, I mean, from his school, I'm sure at your school too, to, you know, those guys around you being able to play with you. Um, are you somebody who goes about your own business? Or are you somebody who, you know, is trying to help yourself, but also help them? I mean, how does it go for you where the time is right to, you know, help them and make sure they're doing what they need to do, but also trying to get in your own work? Because they know you're on a different level of, of talent, at least. So how do you try to complement yourself and them so yeah uh, i choose to you know help myself and my teammates not just myself because at the same time like i said it is a team game and um if you're not performing if your teammates aren't performing it's not going to help you perform you know everybody has to bring positive energy everybody has to do their own thing you know because it's not an independent sport it's not golf it's not tennis um yeah like i said you know, everybody on the field needs to have that chemistry in order to perform well. Because if that chemistry isn't there, somebody's going to get upset, and that's going to make somebody else upset, and, you know, it's just not going to go well. So I choose to help my teammates before myself, but at the same time, I need to self-improve. For you, um, you know, the notoriety has been there just in terms of, you know, we talked about social media, but also on the field now. Um, you know, I saw you on MLB Network. Uh <laughs> Stuff like that. I saw you uh, with Prospect Dugout, um, you know, talking to Nick Swisher. I mean, that's pretty cool stuff, especially for, you know, a kid from around the New York area uh, being able to talk to somebody like that. You've just been doing a lot of cool stuff. You've had a lot of opportunities open up because of the game of baseball. How do you, you know, deal with kind of the public figure knowledge of it, but also, um, you know, have a good head on your shoulders like you do, obviously? Um, because talking to other guys, uh, especially in high school, I'm not sure if it happens to you, but, you know, getting, you know, cards or baseball sent to your house and signing them, you know, it's mm -hmm. cool at first, but then it becomes a hassle of, you know, having to, uh, you know, ship it out, maybe special shipping, depending on if it's a baseball or something. I mean, just the little stuff like that. How do you go about um, <coughs> kind of being a public figure now in the game of baseball? I mean, I'm a normal kid. You know, that's what people don't understand. Even all these celebrities, all these people think because they have talent that they're above everybody else, but we're all just normal people. Some of us are just better at some things than others. So you got to think like if you're a kid and you want to get an autograph from Mike Trout, let's say, you're going to want him to send it back. So you just got to put yourself in the other person's position and kind of just be normal. Um, we're all equal, honestly, just because you're better at some things than someone else doesn't mean they're not better than something than you are. Um, so yeah, I just like to, you know, be normal. If somebody wants something, you know, there's no reason they can't get it. I mean, obviously, you're going to be busy with practice and stuff like that, but you get home at some point, you can take some time out of your day, you know, to make someone else's day. For you, too, I'm um, just a cool aspect of things. Um, like you mentioned, 
But for you, in terms of the game of baseball, obviously, you know, it seems like you've always been, you know, it's gear to ahead of other kids just around the area. Um, but it seems like, you know, you're definitely a hard worker also, uh, just that natural born talent too. When did you know that, you know, you had the opportunity to go to college, to go to, you know, potentially beyond college? Um, you know, was it from a young age when you were playing at 5U and you were playing, uh, you were 5 and playing with 10U? I mean, when did it really start to settle in that it could be more than just, um, you know, a game for fun, so to speak? Um, it was when I started playing with kids my own age, honestly, because um, when I was 5 and there were 10 and stuff like that, you know, I just seemed like kind of normal. I just kind of fit in. So when I started playing my own age and I started doing, you know, extremely well and better than everyone else that's when i started to you know think like okay this could be a this could be a reality this could be a, a career in the future and um i honestly just kept getting better like I, I kept throwing harder than most kids i kept hitting the ball farther and harder than most kids and um honestly it was just very noticeable you know everywhere i went you know people were telling me i was good things like that so um, I honestly just use that as motivation to keep getting better, and I realize that it could be a career in the future, like I said. For you, too, um, just in terms of, you know, kind of going to, um, you know, mentioning uh, Committed to Miami a couple weeks ago now. For you, I mean, just how cool is it to say, you know, you're going to be a hurricane, uh, you know, in the next couple of years? Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. um, it seems like, you know, you're already pumped to go down there, um, just in terms of the excitement uh, boiling around playing uh, some ACC baseball. Uh, I mean, how cool is it to just, you know, wake up every morning and know that you're going to be a hurricane someday? Um, it's a great feeling. I talked to the coaches over there, and I know a few of my friends are coming there as well um, the years after me and even with me. So um, it's, it's really a relief, you know, that I, I found a place that I can call home within the next few years and knowing what a great program they have and a great staff they have. Um, how the staff doesn't just, you know, care about making their players better, but also becoming better people. And um, outside the baseball aspect, you know, they really do improve their players baseball-wise, but even outside of that, they care if you're a good person all around because not everybody wants to just be a good baseball player. You also want to be a good person. For you two, I'm mentioning other kids coming to Miami, uh, you know, just in terms of, uh, you know, the players on the circuit uh, like yourself. Um, outside of just high school, have you grown close with any of them? Uh, have you been able to um, connect at a different level with them just because of you know their drive like you, um, you know their special talents like you, um, you know being more than just a normal high school baseball player? Uh, has it been fun to meet kids from different areas and be able to um, you know bounce ideas off of? Uh, yeah, it's always great because everybody has a different perspective about everything. So um, I go to all these great events, you know. More independent events, I would say, before team events is when you really meet people from other areas. Yeah. Um, so, like, when I went to the USA tryouts and when I went to the Perfect Game Select Festival and things like that is, you know, when I started to, you know, meet all these people because we were all from different areas, but we ended up playing on the same team. So that was really great. And, um, you know, people going to Miami, like you said, um, one of my friends I've played with since I was seven, he, he committed to Miami uh, last year. So that's going to be really fun because, you know, we've been playing for the last 10 years together, nine years. So it's stuff like that, you know, bonds you already have. And being able to share that for the next four years at college, it's just, it's just going to be really fun. But yeah, you know, meeting new people, growing different bonds, like you said, it's just, I think it's better than baseball at some point. Because, you know, baseball isn't going to be forever, but those friends you make are going to be there forever, hopefully. Um Baseball has to come to an end at some point, but friendships are forever. So, you know, it's always great to meet new people and make new friends. For you two being able to get the opportunities to talk to, um, you know, either scouts, uh, but not even really scouts, uh, former pros, pros right now, um, how cool is that for you to just get ideas from them, talk to them, meet them? Uh, you know, because most kids don't get that opportunity, but how cool is it for you to be able to... Um, you know, get advice and really just get advice from some of the best guys in baseball, guys that, you know, used to play, um, just really some great uh, mentors for yourself. Um, it's really great because, you know, they've been there before, so they know what it takes to make it to that level. Um, 
they know they know it better than anyone else. Like I said, you know, you can have these coaches telling you to do this and do that, but you know, these guys have been there and they've done it before, so they can give you advice. No, one, none of these other coaches can. So um, it's always really helpful to, you know, like I said, talk to these people, and um, I want to say, kind of, you know, learn something new every time you talk to them because it's always something new. I mean, they, they you never hear the same thing from two guys unless it's like you know a moral lesson. Yeah. But unless it's a moral lesson, you really get different advice from each of these guys you talk to because not everybody is the same player. Um, they all do their own thing specifically, and they all do their own thing differently, and they're all better at something than the other one is. So it's really, it's really helpful, and it really helps me improve my game when I hear all these different things from all these different guys because I can take each of those and implement it into my game. So, you know, it's like combining all of these guys and making one player. Awesome. For you, I'm um, just kind of wrapping down, um, you know, the podcast here. Going through, um, you know, these next two years, um, not only from a baseball side of things, but growing as a person, uh, you know, just still being, um, you know, a teenager, like you said, a normal teenager. What for you, either in the game of baseball, outside of the game of baseball, what are you really trying to do over the, these next two years before you get to college? Um, honestly, I just want to keep improving, you know, be the best version of myself I can be. Um, you know, like I said, there's always something you got to work on. There's always something you can get better at. Um, there's always more muscle memory you can create because, I mean, you know, maybe you've got one thing and you stuck to it, but at the same time, you need to keep doing that thing over and over. Um, so, yeah, I really just hope to better myself, improve my game, and um, become the best person I could be in and outside the game of baseball. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really there all is to it. You know, you just got to be the best version of yourself you could be no matter what time. Yeah, I mean, totally agree with you on that. Uh, for you, just a couple wrap-up questions. Uh, nothing, you know, crazy or anything. But for you, no over the years, who has been the coolest person you've met in the game of baseball? Um, that's a tough one, honestly. Because everybody in me has a great personality. Um, they're all different. I can't really, you know, pick one guy and... Or maybe, yeah, like, honestly, or I, maybe I can't like pick one, one. Or maybe like one guy um, that you know you were really amped up to meet. Uh, you knew he was going to be at a showcase or something. You were really amped up to meet anybody. Uh, you know, kind of uh, like a list. like 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 a player or like anybody, man. Like a player, you know, person, like um, manager, anything like that. When I was uh, how old was I? When I was twelve, I met Bo Bichette over in um at the Junior Home Run Derby. We had the, uh, there was the Future Stars game going on at the same time, and uh, I met Bo Bichette. Um, who else have I met? I met CC Sabathia. He's, he's a cool guy. Um, you know, like I said, it's just everybody you meet in this game. You can't really specify one person because they all have different personalities, and they're all great. Um, honestly, you just got to get to know each person and take what you can from them because they're all great people. And yeah, you just you just got to make the best of it. For you, what's been the coolest place you've played at um, over your years in the game of baseball thus far? I know you mentioned you know you've been all over um, the country, so to speak. So where's kind of that one stadium where um, it's kind of jaw dropping to uh, be a part of? Um, I'm not sure honestly. I played at Marlins Park. Okay. That was really nice. Um. The Houston Astros spring training in West Palm Beach is cool. Uh, I played at JetBlue. The Red Sox spring training, that was awesome. Um, Cary, North Carolina for USA Baseball, that was a great event. Um, those those the fields are really nice. I mean, I haven't really found one that there was something super special about it, but I've, I've played at plenty of places, and they were all amazing. Um, I'm really not like a – I can't pick one. Yeah. kind of guy you know like it's it's all great it's it's all about the experience in every place you go you know like sure. i said there's something specific about one place that's yes. going to be better about the other and there's something about another that's going to be better about the other sure. so um i really just enjoy every place i go and everybody i meet so i just like taking the scenery and create new bonds for sure for you um you know new jersey baseball uh you know it's starting up now i'm not sure if you guys started practice or anything 
uh, for the high school, but uh, you know, it's right around the corner, whether if you started or not, next couple of weeks. How amped are you to get back on the field um, in the high school circuit um, just because, you know, not being able to play last year, high school, this year coming around? I mean, how amped up are you to, uh, you know, go back on the field for the high school? I'm really excited. You know, it's a new season, my junior year. Um, I want to see how much I improve from my freshman year. I played varsity my freshman year. I didn't get to play last year due to the pandemic. But um, it's always awesome to see how much you've improved, you know, and then if, see how much you can get better. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for it. I'm looking forward to playing with my group of guys I have in my school. Um, I'm really excited to play against the other guys I know at other schools. And um, it's really just going to be a great time, and I look forward to it. You mentioned, uh, you know, a couple of times now that you know, you're just a normal teenager, just like, you know, the rest of us. Uh, for you, outside of the game of baseball, what's, you know, one or two things that people really don't know about you, uh, whether it's, you know, you know, playing video games, uh, you know, a special hobby or something. I mean, what, what outside of the game of baseball is there that people don't know about you? <laughs> Nothing special. You know, <laughs> when I'm not playing baseball, I play video games, um, I go to the mall with my friends, you know, I spend time with my family. Like I said, I'm just normal. I mean, everybody does these things. There's nothing special that I do that's crazy. I don't play an instrument. I don't, you know, <laughs> um, it's nothing crazy. Like I said, you know, play video games with friends, go to the mall with friends. I just spend time with friends and family, just like any normal teenager would do. Now, that's, are, you, that's are, why you, are you like a COD guy? Are you like, you know, playing MLB on, you know, video uh, games? I play like uh, MLB. I play Warzone, right. you know. Mixed um, them all. all right. Yeah, and Tuca. Awesome. For you, final question, uh, and then we'll let you go. For you, you know, talking a lot about, you know, kind of the public <laughs> figure, uh, the notoriety that you've gained, but through it all, I mean, what's, you know, one or two things that you would really want to stress to the youth? Because uh, I know that's something that you're big on. So what's, like, one mm -hmm. or two things um, that you've learned over the years that you want, um, or at least that you would tell kids, uh, you know, as they're trying to come up and do stuff similar to you and, you know, potentially get to a point to where they're at your success? Um, it's honestly just to be yourself. You know, I've said this so many times, but I can't say it enough. Just be yourself. Work with the tools you're given. Um, if you're a short, fast guy, don't go out there trying to hit home runs. You know, if you're a big guy that hits home runs, don't go out there trying to steal bases. You know, work with what you're given because everybody's given a certain ability and they're meant to use that ability. And they're going to be better at that than someone else's. You know, coaches need all types of guys. They don't need nine guys that hit home runs. They don't need nine guys that can only hit singles. And they don't need nine guys that can steal bases. But, um, you know, it's taking three of those guys from each category and putting them all together on the team. So just do what you do best and don't try to be something you're not. Awesome. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you know, it's been in the works for a couple uh, I think months now. But really just... um. You know, amped up to see you play. Um, you know, I'm from the area, so I'm going to try to honestly catch a few, a few of your games uh, just to see you uh, in action. But really just all, wish you all the best. Uh, thanks for coming on. I know you're busy with the family and everything. I know Sunday is your kind of personal day. Uh, so just, you know, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, just hope to talk soon and hope to see you on the field uh, soon. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you, man. Take care. All right. You too.